Okay. Welcome to this lovely and glamorous evening here at the Maine Jewish Museum where the main goal is to celebrate diversity. There's people here from different backgrounds, religions, cultures, denominations, and we're all here just to celebrate each other and have fun. Yeah, what a concept, right? Coming together, having fun. You had Florence and the Machine from her first <laughs> album starting us off with You've Got the Love. Love that song. Yeah, it's my favorite of yours too. Yes. Did you know that for every event that I do or big meeting, before going to an event, I listen to that song but blare it? Oh, I, I did not that know that. Really. And for you guys to know, this is Dr. Jeff Barkin. He's a practice and psychiatrist, and he's also the co-host of a healthy conversation with Steve Woods, who's actually joining us back there. <laughs> and this is Hannah Yeshivi. Hannah is a reporter at News Center Maine, as well as a fill-in anchor. She's also an immigrant from Costa Rica. Thanks for joining us, guys. So we, I know everybody's kind of pretty stiff, so we want to do an icebreaker. Jeff, take it away. All right, so, you know, the way to get to know people is to get to know people. And it strikes me, and you too, probably, mm -hmm. that we've balkanized, we've separated. So here's what I recommend we do. Okay. How about, for 60 seconds, it's a 60-second icebreaker, you're gonna look around, not far, you're gonna find somebody who's a few seats away from you that you don't know. Make eye contact, and then you have 60 seconds to tell them about yourself and make a connection. Okay? Three, two, two one. Go. I feel like it's okay if the icebreaker ends up being 30 seconds more. seconds. That's a minute. Thank you for breaking the ice. That is a minute. Okay, guys. We're going to keep going with the fashion show. So for those who don't know... You know, the thing about this crowd is they really seem to like each other. I know. And, and you know what they've done? They've pulled off the four C's. <laughs> they've connected, communicated, collaborated. And that's the goal. And maybe they'll create. So that's a wild use of a, a Jewish museum. I know. What do you think? We're super excited that you guys loved the icebreaker. We're going to have one at the end of the show, too. But now we're going to get going. Um, we want to have some music. I mean, after all that excitement, I, don't you want to like sit down and chill and hear some music? I do. So we have a very special guest. Her name is Clarice Caracida. She's a Rwandan singer, a songwriter, a cultural dancer, and a poet. Yeah, and Clarice uh, really rose to fame in 2018 when she released her debut album called Gira Niza, which translates to Be Kind. Now here's something really cool, because like you would not know this, but she is the number one star, female star in Rwanda for 2019 and 2021. So please help me welcome Clarice.
Hi everyone. It's so nice to meet you. It's so good to be here. I'm not alone. I'm with Mesa, and she's she's a great pianist and a great singer. It's just that she's not going to sing tonight, but she'll be playing for me the songs I'm going to sing for you. By the rivers of Babylon, where we sat down, where we wept, when we remember Zion. By the rivers of Babylon, where we sat down, where we wept when we remember Zion when the wicked carried us away in captivity required from us a song now how shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land Let the words of our mouth and meditations from our hearts be accepted boy in thy sight here tonight let the words of our mouth and meditations from our hearts be acceptable in thy sight here tonight by the rivers of Babylon where we sat down, where we wept, when we remember Zion, by the rivers of Babylon, where we sat down, where we wept, when we remember. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. The next song I'm going to sing for you. Uh, actually, I'm not going to sing it for you. I want to sing with you. This is uh, a Swahili song. Uh, called Hakuna Matata. Hakuna Matata, it means no worries. Okay, and I'm going to sing for you just that Hakuna Matata. Mm -hmm. Hakuna Matata, you're just going to sing that one. Hakuna Matata. Hakuna Matata, if no worries, please let me hear you singing. Hakuna Matata, Hakuna Matata, Hakuna Matata. Okay. Do you love this summer? Do you miss the winter? Do you love the pizza? Do you love Jewish Museum? Are you just happy? Do you have some worries? Hakuna matata, hakuna matata, hakuna matata, hakuna matata, eh, jambo, jambo buwana, tukomzuri sana, kwetu, mwakaribishwa, 
many yetu hakuna matata can we sing hakuna matata once more one more time hakuna matata let's go together ah 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 hakuna matata hakuna matata hakuna matata last time hakuna matata hakuna matata no 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 hakuna matata can we do it again hakuna matata mm -mm. hakuna matata hakuna mata yes yes <laughs> Thank you. The last song I'm going to sing tonight is a song that I composed for the street children in my country. I used to be the advocate for the rights of the children. And when they invited me to sing here to sing in this event, I thought how uh Men Jewish Museum is a home. Like it's so welcoming to all people and I thought of singing this song here just to celebrate the diversity and like to feel this welcome yeah it is called just like you How they live, see how I was supposed to be, see how they are, see how they live, see how I was supposed to be. Le, 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 le. Le, 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 le. I deserve a better life like you. I am like you. Ele le 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 le. Ele le le le. I deserve a better life like you. I am like you. Don't throw a stone on me. Don't put a blame on me. I would enjoy living like you, healthy, worthy, clean and respected. I didn't call this troubles myself. I didn't know life in this way. So try to be in my shoes, even for a day or a second. Le, 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 like you, le, 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 le. You deserve a better life like me Because I am like you Give me a chance I am like you Can we sing I am like you? Give me a chance I am like you Give me a chance I am like you I deserve the best I am like you You deserve the best We are the same. I am like you. 
I am like you. Thank you. You know, the lyrics of the words and everything. Thank you, Clarice. I mean, it's amazing to be in a place where it's this holy place, this old building mm -hmm. that's a synagogue, a main Jewish museum. But to listen to Rwandan music Incredible. live, filled out place. I wanted to just say thank you to the Portland Police Department because they're here tonight keeping us all safe. I think that's really important that part of being able to be together and to have a sense of belonging is to feel safe, don't you think? Absolutely. And now we're going to have Dawn LaRochelle. She's the executive director of the Maine Jewish Museum, and she's going to welcome you guys. So Dawn, <laughs> welcome. Dawn, Dawn, I just want to, before you, before you start, I just want to like level set and tell folks a little about you, OK? because you're a recovering restaurateur, a serial entrepreneur. You're the executive director of the Maine Jewish Museum. You've got oversight over everything at the Jewish Museum. Paintings that are curated by Nancy Davidson, photographs curated by Nancy Kahn, and you pull it off seamlessly. You're also an amazing cook. You had a catering business, I know. So thank you for hosting this amazing event where we're, we're all here belonging together. And if you're wondering what her desserts taste like, don't worry, you're gonna have a whole bunch after the show. <laughs> so my earliest memory is of me at age two and a half or so, kicking and screaming and throwing a full grown temper because my parents, who were taking me to a family gathering, wanted me to wear, get this, the pink romper. But me and a should have, I wanted to wear the red polka dot dress. And then, about two decades later, I was backpacking with a group of friends through Europe and Asia. I insisted on coding a portable island in my backpack so my feet would always look cool. This is for real. So you can see, sorry guys, did everyone hear that story? Good. So you can see why a fashion show fundraiser was just a no-brainer for me. But I very quickly learned as I started to put this together that a fashion show has a lot of moving parts and most of them have nothing to do with fashion. Um, it takes truly a shtetl to pull off an event of this magnitude. And I want to first give a shout out to our sponsors, Coffee by Design, Kitchen Cove Design Studio and Color Collection. Give it up for them. Without them, tonight would not have been possible. Um, huge, grateful hugs also go out to our fashion show committee, you can read about them in the uh, program that hopefully you all got. Um, our models, our designers, our donors, the main squeeze accordion ensemble. Of course, Clarice, who I had the misfortune of having to follow up on, um, and Jeffrey and Hannah. Um, I would also be remiss not to mention the unsung hero of the hour and every hour, my husband, Nick Naughton, um, who deserves a medal for being married to the executive director. He is not only modeling today with our dogs, but he was also my catering sous chef for the cocktail hour. Um, finally, I want to piggyback on what Jeff and Hannah said. Tonight is about belonging. It's about celebrating our diversity, our togetherness, and it's also about storytelling. 
Museums, really, at the end of the day, are about stories. Um, and what is about to unfold is more than just a fashion show, much as I love fashion. Um, it is the story of our diverse community, told through rabbinical garb and drag, through traditional Chinese and Moroccan and West African dress, through knitwear and jewelry and headdresses. The outfits you're going to see on the runway communicate messages across time, culture, and language. The stories we wear are individual and authentic, and they connect us at the most fundamental level. It is this individuality and connectivity that inspired tonight's celebration, and I hope it inspires all of you as well. Thank you for joining. Enjoy the show. And so, now the moment that we all have been waiting for, right? Let's get it going. Let's get a fashion show happening. Who do you want to start off with? I think we should start from the beginning. We have... I love that idea, because <laughs> they're lined up. They're ready to go from the beginning. Okay. Marshall Tinkle. So, Marshall is our first model. He is wearing a colorful, hand-embroidered rabbinic robe that was designed for leading Jewish marriage and counter sessions. I delved into this, Marshall. These were highly structured weekend getaways where people who were getting married would shut the world out and learn to communicate their thoughts and feelings together. This was a movement that started in Spain a long, long time ago and slowly made its way to the United States in the late 60s, culminating in its peak in the 80s and 70s when it really sort of peaked out. And here's a really cool fact about Marshall. He's a lawyer who secretly wants to be a DJ <laughs> or a rabbi. There's no job security whatsoever in broadcasting or the event. <laughs> I know. Thank you, Marshall. Up next, we have Jessica Johnson. Jessica is a French-Canadian-American outfit. It was designed by her, in fact, wasn't it? Yes, the dress you're looking at right now was designed all by Jessica. It was one of the seven dresses that she took to a trip to Las Vegas, and she wore it for yeah, a special night. The goal for this specific gown was to go clubbing. Have you ever gone clubbing? A few times, right After there. this, we're going clubbing. Anyway, she has the silver sequins in honor of a disco ball. She's a dress designer and a seamstress, and she owns her own business in Biddeford, Maine, called, called Soul Stitcher. So if you want, you want to see her work, it's in Biddeford. Once again, Soul Stitcher. And as you can see, that dress made by Jessica herself. Next up is Julia Johnson. Julia is three years old. Eight. Eight? Eight. <laughs> yeah, I guess a three-year-old couldn't do that. You've I know. suddenly grown from three to eight. Uh, her dress was designed by her mom. Jessica. Jessica. Look at that. And it's a beautiful dress that actually talks all about Julia. Julia loves butter butterflies. She loves the color pink. And it's her favorite gown. And Julia, we understand that you want to be a genetic engineer when you grow up, or a ballerina. And I promise you could be a genetic engineer who is a ballerina. You could do both. <laughs> Guaranteed. Thank you, Julia. Up next, we have Lily Johnson. She is six years old. She's also Jessica's daughter, her younger daughter, and she's wearing a gown that Jessica, her mom, made. And it's a loud, colorful gown, which describes Lily. Lily, that's beautiful. Jessica, in designing her dresses, wanted to express the personalities of her daughters. So this dress represents 
unicorns for things that are princessy. And also, we know that Lily is a killer athlete. Lily loves to read, to color, to make people laugh, and she's just here to have a good time like all of you guys, right, Lily? <laughs> Gotta love it. Woo! Barbara Winters is next. Barbara is wearing this gorgeous sweater, and Barbara knitted this sweater out of leftover yarns, right? That's incredible. And Barbara, you have to know, has a ton of leftover yarns because she repurposes her yarns from all these other projects. The silver and turquoise and navy sweater was designed for dressy occasions and was, as she describes, fun and interesting to knit. And here's something really interesting about Barbara. She started knitting when she was just six years old. And knit so much that you got in trouble in school, didn't you? <laughs> you want to tell us about that story, Jeff? Well, you did knit and got in trouble, except for, except for when you were in uh, singing. And when you were singing, people would have nothing to do with it. They were very glad that you stopped. <laughs> knit, don't sing. Words for Barbara to live by. Now, as if that isn't enough, as if that isn't enough, Barbara has two daughters, Nancy Kahn. Nancy is the curator of photography right here at the Maine Jewish Museum. And her other daughter uh, is also here. Gorgeous sweater. Thank you for modeling that, Barbara. And Barbara tells us it might be up for sale. She doesn't know yet, but she'll decide later today. I guess that's a source of some controversy. Right. But I guess it's for sale, right, Barbara? <laughs> Woo! Sulaimana Samari from Ghana. Want to tell us about this outfit? Yes, up next we have Sulaimana Samari. He's wearing an outfit from Ghana and West Africa. And this attire, as you can see, it's a beautiful gown. This traditional attire is called a fugu, which was actually once only worn by royal people. Yeah, but it, it's used generalized. And it's made for more people out of very special fabric weaved only in Ghana. A couple of things about Sulaimana. He's a new Mainer. Sulaimana loves Maine's wonderful nature and people and notes that it gives an opportunity uh, for immigrants to succeed. He has four children, two from Ghana, and his oldest serves in the U.S. Army. Thank you, Sulaimana. Shanna Gross. Up next, we have Jenna Gross. She's wearing a shirt made by a main artist, Olivia Hopstadt. Those colors, I love that. They pop, they wind, they have these funky sleeves. And, and Jeff, it's reversible. I know. It's, it's <laughs> That's wild. what I love about it. I it's want, beautiful. Like, can you make one of those for a guy? You could wear it in the back, you could wear it in the front. That's really beautiful, Jenna. Now, Jenna is living her dream. Her dream is that of being a modern dancer, and she started her own dance company, the Rosewoods Dance Collaborative, which focuses on comedy-based movement theater. Gorgeous, thank you. Woo, thank you, Jenna. Up next, we have Rachel Barkin. That sounds like a familiar last name. I know this girl. You do? I is do. it your daughter? It is. It is, indeed. Rachel Barkin is wearing a one-of-a-kind overall by Ella Coos. And who's Ella, Jeff? Yeah, Ella is the granddaughter, the granddaughter of Nancy Davidson. Nancy Davidson is sitting right there. And she is the curator of all paintings here at the Maine Jewish Museum. Really a staple in this community. Everybody knows Nancy. And actually, Ella Coos is right there, too. Yep. Yeah. 
Rachel loves coloring, hiking, spending time with friends and family. And of course, she loves modeling. Rachel loves to model. And I'll tell you a story about Rachel. Okay. It, it's not always easy for poor Rachel. She was once attacked by these geese on a family farm. And after the goose attack, that's when she figured, forget the geese, I'm gonna model. <laughs> Thank you, Rachel. Next up is Hazel Unger. Hazel Unger is wearing an upcycled jacket made by a main artist called Joyce Ellen Weinstein. So listen to this. The jacket is made from plastic trash bags, which is pretty cool. Now, if that's not cool enough, if that's not cool enough, Hazel is wearing that over her wedding dress, the very dress that she wore April 22nd, 2022, when she married Jesse. The purse is also made from recycled materials, and it's a very stylish purse. I love that purse. Yeah, so do I. I also love Hazel. Can I tell you something about Hazel? Do you know her? I do. She's okay. my daughter-in-law. Oh! I love that! Hazel is Jessie's wife. She's one of the most creative people I've ever met. She comes over with her notebook and she's always painting drawing always i mean she's the most creative person so it makes sense for her to be here totally and she and jesse bought their place sight unseen in portland which hazel says is the craziest thing that she's ever done wow i i, I think it was a good decision thank We're delighted. you Jason. next up is nick naunton nick is not walking down the aisle Alone. The company. Nick is Don LaRochelle's husband, and he's walking down the aisle with Rosie and Tina, two mini rat terriers. That's the only breed that's 100% American, is the rat terrier. So let's talk about this outfit that you have on, Nick. You're wearing a talus, and the talus is a ritual Jewish garb worn around the neck. It's the first ever official tartan Jewish pattern, which came into being in 2017, which was when you and Don married. Something about Nick. Nick is not American. He's diverse. He's with us together, and you could tell from the bow tie that it, he has something to do with Britain, which is true. And when Nick first came to the United States, do you know what happened to poor Nick? No. He got confused. With what? He thought that football involved like a round ball. It doesn't. That I, actually happens to some people. It does, but he's okay. But if you want to know more about... Before the dogs leave, they're wearing cheerleader dresses made in Bangor, Maine by Dog Knee. Both of the dogs are wearing those custom dresses and it's beautiful. Beautiful. Next is Maya Mudashiro. Woo! Look at this beautiful outfit. Maya is eight years old. She's half Jewish American and half black Beninese. Her outfit oh. is- She's Shoshana. Oh, I'm sorry. You're like fooling us. You're messing with- Shoshana is Maya's Maya. sister. Shoshana is six years old. She wants to be a doctor when she grows up. And she's wearing this, this uh, costume designed by main designer Ebenezer Akatpo out of cloth native to the country of Ghana. Okay, so we had a little confusion. Now we have Maya, which is Shoshana's sister. Maya is eight years old, and she's also wearing custom designed beautiful outfit by Ebenezer Akakbo from Ghana. So Maya is also a STEM type and wants to be either a scientist or an artist when she grows up. 
and something really cool. Woo! And this is something that Maya and I share in common. We both speak French and English, which is pretty cool for an eight-year-old. Bonjour. Comment ça va? <laughs> Up next, we have Nathan Fritz, which is also known as Miso Honey. That's his drag name. Wearing a pink linen A-line dress with snake line trim and fairway plastic bag purse, custom designed by Maine's own Joyce Ellen Weinstein. His pronouns are he, him, and this is something really cool. This is one of my favorite facts about Miso Honey. So Miso Honey leads the LGBTQIA education, outreach, and policy change at Hannaford Supermarkets. Isn't that cool? So, Nathan Fritz, a.k.a. Miso Honey, make sure you give me your contact information because we're going to want to learn a whole lot more about your outreach efforts at Hannaford's on behalf of the LBGTQIA plus community. It's pretty cool. Huh? I'll say. You know, when you get to know people, you learn these little things about them. Right. These things that are not so little. Yeah. I mean, that's a big deal, what that he's is doing. Hannaford's exciting. is a big company in Maine. It's owned by a large company, Dalhousie, overseas. Mm -hmm. It's a big, big deal. That's Wonderful. Awesome. Okay, up next we have Olivia Hochstadt. That's right. Olivia is wearing a hand knit top that she custom designed herself, inspired by very organic living shapes that flow into each other. And it was inspired by Olivia's interest in textured yarns and materials that demonstrate strong contrasting colors. As you can tell, she's a designer and she aspires to one day own a, sh a shop of her own. She makes handmade clothes from around the world and she teaches art to inmates in the main prison system, which is incredible. I love that sweater. Totally love that. Next is Xiao Ming Chung. She is wearing a traditional Chinese kapow. The kapow, interestingly, Hannah, was an everyday staple in the wardrobe of Chinese women from the 1920s through the 1960s. But more modernly, it's morphed and turned into the embodiment of timeless gorgeousness. That's awesome. Xiao Ming wanted to be a librarian, and she may still go back to school to get her master's of library because she really wants to be a librarian. Another way to learn about people is to read books. Absolutely. And Go she back loves to hiking and swimming, two things that we both love to yeah, do. We do. <laughs> That's right. So next, we have Rachel Badie. Rachel, her pronouns she, her. She's proudly Jewish and queer. She's a Mainer. And she hand knit, a, she's wearing a hand knit dress cut by a Maine artist called Olivia Hoxstad. That's beautiful. Yeah, it features hand-dried silk ribbon and fine mohair. And it's the contrast between the two materials that makes for this very striking look. The white asymmetrical hem flows like tendrils, sort of like a jellyfish as you move. And she actually comes from a family of very talented knitters and crocheters. So it makes sense for her to be here, and she's rocking that gown. And another Rachel Bede fact, Rachel's great passion is runway modeling. That's awesome. So I'm glad you're doing your passion. Yeah, she's also an amateur makeup artist. Thank you, Rachel. 
So next we have Moon Mashar, who's wearing a hand-knit shawl designed by main artist Olivia Hochstadt. It was part of Stephen West's mystery knit-along, and this shawl is an explosion of both color and lively patterns. Moon tells me that this actually describes who she is, the vibrancy, the colors. When she saw it, she knew she had to wear this. And it reflects, it reflects her background from the Noor tribe, the Noor tribe in South Sudan. And here's a pretty cool fact about her. She is a UFO fanatic. Interesting. And when she's not chasing aliens, she's the program manager at the Maine Association for New Americans. Very And cool. is uh, also on the board of Portland Ovations. Very talented. Yeah. Multi-talented. Thank you, Moon. Up next, we have Cassandra Graf. Cassandra is wearing a Greek-American outfit. Her outfit is based on acrylic and canvas paintings by her husband, which is a main artist, Rick Graff, and it's all inspired by his paintings, which is actually what she's wearing. Yeah, Rick painted, and he felt that wearing the art could be a wonderfully creative way of expressing himself, so he chose particularly bold and energetic patterns to add vibrancy and life to the whole outfit. Now, we have the most interesting people. So I learn about you, and Cassandra, like me, you're a psychotherapist, you're a mindfulness coach, and a teacher. Wow. And I love those pants. She loves dancing, singing, adventures throughout Maine. Thank you, Cassandra. Up next, we have Elizabeth Donato. She is wearing a Sudan African outfit. She's wearing Ghanaian jewelry, custom designed by main artist Ebenezer Akakpo. And the, as you can see, Jeff, the pieces are bold, bright, beautiful. Yeah. Look at that bracelet. Wow. And look at that necklace. One of the Beautiful. Things that Elizabeth has on her favorites about Maine is maple syrup. Do you like maple I syrup? I love maple Me syrup. Too. I love it. And the other thing that she loves that we both love? Coffee. Coffee. There's no such thing as too much coffee. Right. <laughs> Woo! She loves biking, and of course, as you can see, she loves fashion, and she loves to wear big garments. And going out on the Back Cove Bay. Next is Juliet Carrollson. Juliet Carrollson's grandmother made a traditional German drindle. And in honor of her grandmother, do you know what her grandmother's birthday would be today? Wow. Yeah, 123. Oh, wow. What a special occasion. So in honor of her grandmother, she made this dress. She's actually an artist whose works have been exhibited right here at the Maine Jewish Museum, which is pretty cool, too. And another interesting fact is that her grandparents left Germany just before Nazis took control, and they were able to take their pieces from the museum that they had before they disappeared, so she has those. Julian Benzi, check out this headpiece. This is a headpiece and dress designed by Julian himself. This is absolutely fascinating, and it's a representation of isolation wow. and alienation due to cultural identity. So think about the contrast. You've got colors, you've got a lot of drawing attention, but also being trapped. That's and it, beautiful. Isn't that cool? So and it's cool. to illustrate how marginalized groups can actually self-inflict cultural distance due to their fears of being seen too much, but also not being seen enough. Interesting. 
He loves Maine's strong sense of community, and he wants to relearn piano, which is pretty cool too. I used to play piano when I was a little girl. Did you? Yeah, but I lost the. I don't play skill. any instruments. Very sad. No, it's terrible. Who's up next? Up next, we have Joan Barkin. Ah, familiar last name. Joan Belsky Barkin. I know her. Who is she? That's Joan Belsky Barkin. That's my wife. Joan is Jeff's wife, and she's wearing a beautiful gown made by a main designer. Adele Masengo is the designer, and... She's here with her entire family, as you can see. <laughs> Most importantly, you know something that... Beautiful. You know something about Joan? What? She's kind of shy. But she's got a master's in fine arts oh. from the Washington University in St. Louis in painting and printmaking. And Joan is going to have a show right here at the Maine Jewish Museum in July of 2025. Okay, guys, write that down. That's pretty cool. That's awesome. Yeah. So next we have Khadija Barkawi, who's wearing a traditional Moroccan caftan. Wow. That's beautiful. A traditional Moroccan kaftan is a traditional robe from Morocco. And the kaftan was first introduced in Morocco in the 16th century. And it's pretty popular still nowadays. And as you can see, it's beautiful. And she has that red scarf that she's adding. And it's from the tribe, her indigenous tribe from North Africa. Absolutely beautiful. Khadija is the founder of Soel Travel and also works as program and outreach manager at the third place. You know, she's fluent in a lot of languages like you, Hannah, but five of them. Whoa. And she recently submitted her PhD, her dissertation, Woo! in international human rights and cultural integration. Quite the brainy, multi-talented person. That's awesome. Thank you, Khadija. Hayes Lif Kyun Ming is wearing a traditional Chinese Tang suit. Look at this, Hannah. What's a Tang suit? Okay, so here's a history lesson for you. Interestingly enough, the Tang suit did not originate in the Tang Dynasty, but it later originated in the Qing Dynasty. And we're talking about the 1644 all the way to the 1900s. And it's a beautiful antique piece. It's very specific. It was developed from a traditional type of the era's Manchurian attire. And it consists of a traditional Chinese style jacket, which has buttons down the front, down the middle, with these little frog shaped things that are formed from intricately knotted cords. Beautiful. And two silk fans are worn on either side of the outfit in the traditional way. Thank you. Up next, we have Nadej Umukunzi. She is wearing a custom-designed jumpsuit that she herself designed, inspired by traditional women in Rwanda and Burundi, and a traditional headpiece once worn by Rwandan royalty and now worn by Rwandan brides or people celebrating special occasions. Nadej wants to learn how to become an interior designer. Um, so this is actually a fashion show for her to get back into the fashion world. So she thought, maybe I could rock it. And she's actually doing a great job. Amberlynn Esperanza. Where is Amberlynn? Amberlynn is a first-generation Filipino-American wearing jewelry custom-designed by Ebenezer Akakpo. Okay, listen to this, guys. 
In seven days, Amber Lynn will be traveling to Las Vegas to compete at, as a Miss Maine for the title of Miss for Miss America in the pageant there. She will also be wearing a dress in Las Vegas that, in, that is inspired by the Maine State Bird, which is the chickadee. She wanted to show something about Maine and she's doing that. So congratulations and good luck in Las Vegas. Beautiful. Oh, Jeff, did you know something that is exciting to me? So Amber Lynn loves to dance Latin music, merengue, bachata, cumbia, which is everything that I love to dance to. So we'll have to go out and dance sometime here in Portland. That'd be a lot of fun. Yeah. So Yun Lao Kun Min is wearing a traditional Chinese kapow, which was handmade on a Chinese loom. Her hobbies include mahjong and cooking. Now, so here is something that you have to know about Zhang Yu. She makes the best dumplings outside of China. Beautiful. Fela. Fela Sutton Bengali is wearing a Hindu and Jewish outfit. It's a maxi dress custom made by Renee Garland right here in Portland, Maine. Pretty cool. Wow, that's beautiful. Yeah, really is. I like how that flows. The fabric that she's using comes all the way from India, but it's made right here in Maine. And she's also wearing garments that are made um, in India. You hear a funny story about Thela? Yeah. So I know that you like Las Vegas. Yes. And there's a Las Vegas theme. But Thela once lost her mother. I don't know how you lose your mother, Thela, but she lost her mother in the Las Vegas airport. Her mother was found, and the Las Vegas airport is now open. Wow, interesting. Okay, up next, Nancy Three Hoffman. Nancy is wearing a top with matching purse and a scrunchy bracelet made out of, believe it or not, umbrella covers. Now, the design started with the sleeves and cases of 25 umbrella covers that were donated by the Traveler's Insurance Company you know, with that upside-down umbrella. And if you couldn't guess it by now, Nancy is the founder and the executive director of the Umbrella Cover Museum in Peaks Island. And she's here, which is pretty cool. Have you I'll been say, here? I've never been to the Umbrella Museum, have you? Yes, it's you awesome, it's on Peaks there. Island. She's a musician who actually also played today during the cocktail hour. That's going to happen later today. Very cool. So let's stick along with the umbrella theme. I, I hear that it could be raining or was raining. Lynn Heinemann is modeling another umbrella-related outfit. This one designed by Tony Award-winning costume designer Paloma Young. Come on in. Come on in, Lynn. Let's see that. That is a beautiful outfit. Here's a cool fact about Lynn. She is a theater junkie. She saw 200 plays in one year, and most of them she saw for free because she was a volunteer usher. Beautiful. And she's also a trustee for the Umbrella Cover Museum. <laughs> and she donated about 100 covers. So if it rains or if you're actually in need of an umbrella, Nancy is your lady. She has a hundred of them. And most of those hundred umbrellas were found in mud or puddles. No way. Yeah, really? <laughs> That's awesome. Up next, Barbara Winters, round two with another piece that she made herself. So, in terms of being together and getting to know each other, 
Sometimes it's fun to talk about funny stories about somebody. So let me tell you about Barbara's first date with her second husband. <laughs> so Barbara gets all dolled up, right? The hair, the makeup, the this, the that, and they're going on a sailboat ride. Okay. So she's going from the dinghy into the sailboat, right into the water. Oh my right God, into the water. Got married anyway. Her I husband was story. afraid that you couldn't swim, but you can swim, right? Yeah, good. Oh, I love that story. Barbara made that piece herself, and she's also wearing a hat that she made herself. Isn't that cool, Jeff? That's beautiful. I love the, the combination of those, and like on a bright, sunny day. Beautiful. You've got it covered. Thank you. Beautiful. So we have another appearance by Jenna Gross. Jenna Gross, her pronouns are they, she. This is her second appearance too. And she's wearing a playful gay outfit designed by herself, which is so cool. Yeah, she made this as a form of self-expression that liberates people to just sort of dress queer and importantly, the skirt has itself been an ongoing project for five years. It's crocheted from scraps of yarn, and she's not gonna stop until she makes an entire wall. Wow, that that's cool? interesting. So I think we have our last model, and then we're wrapping it up. We have Marshall Tinkle. Marshall is back for his second appearance. He's wearing an 85-year-old rabbinical robe and hat that it was custom made in Hungary and it was worn for many, many, many years by a rabbi there. A rabbi, Joel Tibor Klein. Have you ever met him? Because I have not. No, but he has a unique story. I'll say. Klein was born January 1st, 1923. He died last year on his 100th birthday. Rabbi Klein was a Holocaust survivor who was ordained as a rabbi after the war. Klein was able to escape the concentration camp and then he moved to Portland, Maine. And now today, Marshall is wearing the piece that he wore for many, many years, carrying all that legacy and tradition and history. Marshall. Marshall is wearing this robe, and it's important to know that Rabbi Klein's daughter donated the robe to the Maine Jewish Museum so it can be kept alive and to all Maine Holocaust survivors for future generations to come. Amazing. So let's give all of our models a round of applause, please. Let's have them come through one more time. Diversity, culture, belonging. This is the ultimate being together, isn't I know. it? All under one roof. So do you think anybody feels uncomfortable? Because I feel the love. I don't think anybody's uncomfortable. Right. I think we're all here together, don't you? Yeah, celebrating, united. Take a lap, models and designers. You've shown us such an aesthetic. 
Wow. Thank you everyone for coming, but the night is not over. As I promised, Don made some desserts and that's happening downstairs on the first floor in the community room. There's also coffee there. Coffee um, that's from Coffee by Design. And, and don't forget to complete your silent auction and pay for your live auction, myself included, downstairs and return your paddles for reuse. Oh, that's a good idea. And thank you so much for coming. Keep your eye on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and the website at mainjewishmuseum.org for announcements of all future programs. Have a great night. Thank you, everyone.